on the water an adventure around this great brown land and beyond. We're going to have a look at vessels and watercraft from manpower to wind power and we'll even crank it up with horsepower. So strap on your life jacket and get set to get wet on the water. On the water overseas in Maine, USA. I'm aboard the Isaac H. Evans, a schooner running out of Rockland, Maine. This is Captain Brenda Walker, owner, skipper of the fantastic vessel Isaac H. Evans. Tell us a little bit about the vessel. Well, the, the Isaac Evans was built in 1886 in Maurice New Jersey, and uh, that makes her 120 years old this year. She was originally built to carry oysters in the Delaware Bay and that's what she did for most of her life. Um, and she always did it under sail until 1946 when the laws over oystering changed and instead of having to do it under just sail alone, they were able to do it under power. So they took her sail rig out, they put an engine in and they started competing with the, with the power boats that were doing the same thing. Now you run a tight ship it's also a whole lot of fun because if I wanted to come along on a tour with a fishing rod, a sea kayak, some diving gear, you're okay with doing all that? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, basically I think of the schooner as a platform for showing people about sailing, but also show, showing people about enjoying Maine. And there's a lot to enjoy, uh, from the wildlife to the islands, and you know, even if it is just throwing a hook in the water. You know, we don't usually catch a lot of fish, but there's the mackerel out there. Um, and even sometimes the stray salmon from the fish pens, so we always keep our fingers crossed. But whatever people are interested in, I'm pretty flexible and, and open to letting them explore the, the, the way they want to explore. Now you've got a, a first mate who knows what you want before you know what to do. <laughs> you've got the most hospitable mess mate you could meet and the greatest chef that I've ever tasted. How hard is it to find these people and keep them happy on a a vessel like this where you're in each other's pockets for four months of the year and it could get testy. It can be hard. Uh, it takes a certain personality, I think, to be in, even interested in applying for this kind of job. And it's not always a good fit. Um, over the years, I've gotten better at sensing during an interview whether things are going to work together or not. And the crew that I have right now, I'm just incredibly fortunate to have them. Eileen, um, my chef, has been with me for four years. And um, if anybody else in the fleet is eating better than us, I would be really amazed. Yeah, I'm gaining weight and I'm not really happy about it, but um, the guests love it, I love it. And the thing with Eileen is that on some of the other boats, there's, there's sort of a set menu throughout their season where you kind of know what to expect if you're a crew member. You know that on Monday we're going to have fish or on Friday we're going to have ice cream or whatever it is. And Eileen's not that way at all. She's always cooking something new and different and it keeps it kind of exciting for us because we never know what she's going to do and that kind of keeps her happy in the galley and it's just a matter of finding out what makes each crew member happy and within the limitations making that happen. Um, Sean's been with me for, my first mate has been with me for two years. Um, we don't know what he's going to do this winter or next year. I'd be thrilled if all of them came back. It's just, it's been a really good fit. Joining me now on the water is Sean Melillo, a good friend of mine, old buddy, happens to be first mate on Isaac Evans. Sean, welcome to On the Water. Thanks. Tell us a little bit about the first mate's jobs, responsibilities aboard the vessel. Well, my primary duties are to uh, do maintenance on the boat, uh, help run the foredeck, um, basically cleaning, all overall janitorial duties of the boat and just help sail it. I'm also the one that poses for shots for the captain to take pictures, put the brochure on the website, you know. I entice all the babes to come aboard and come sailing with us. It hasn't been working too good so far, you know, they're pretty sporadic. You know, we get some once in a while, but, you know, so if you're watching this, Come on up to me and come sit down with us. Thousands of guests, thousands of questions. 
which question arises the most? There are a lot of questions that I answer all the time. Um, one of them is, what do you do in the winter time? Um, but probably the question I get the most is, where are we going? And it's really difficult, especially we have people that come from all walks of life, all educations, um, all over the world. And it's just really hard these days for people to let go of the idea of when and where. Um, they think that we must, like Princess Cruise Lines or something, have a place that we have to get them at a particular time, and that's just not the case. And trying to impress on people that it's not where we're going, but that we're already there. Um, and it's, it's not in the, in the arriving, but it's in the getting there. That's the most important. So if, if I can get someone to take their wristwatch off, I haven't worn a watch in 13 or 14 years, but just to let go of the time and the schedule and know that we're just going to go wherever the winds and tide take us. When we're sailing in some of the most beautiful sailing grounds in the world, there are thousands of islands and that comes with protected coves and harbors all over the place and, and it's going to be a different one every night and we'll get there when we get there. And who cares where we're going, we're just, we're not at work. That's right, <laughs> exactly. So Captain, can I have a go? Of course Michael, here you go. Thank you. Oh uh, by the way, where are we going? On the last trip I did with you, we shot the basin. Uh, your Mount Everest, would we say? Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, the basin is a place that I've thought of going for years and years, and we finally made it in. And basically what it is, is a hurricane hole on the island of Vinyl Haven, um, which I had always heard that schooners would go into to either load lumber or to winter over. And I've always looked at it from a small boat, either my rowboat or a yawl boat or a kayak. And just going in in those small boats always made me wonder how in the world they got big boats in there. Um, so over a period of years, I've, I've taken a few people in there. And this year, my first mate, Sean, and I went in in our kayaks. And we really investigated where the rocks were and what the tide was like and how fast it comes in and out. And uh, we finally decided that it could be done. It's basically a 30-foot entrance, 30 feet wide, with a big rock in the middle. Um, and it's, it's very shallow at the entrance, and then it opens up into a big bowl that's about 120 feet deep. So for the tide to rush in and out of the basin, it has to go through that very narrow entrance, and it's like whitewater rapids when you go in. Well, it's the last day of September last lobster bake of the last voyage. Next season's starting to book uh, if you're interested in Australia to come up here and visit Brenda and the Isaac Evans. Brenda will tell us all about it. Yeah it is the the last trip of the year um, and next season we'll be starting sailing right around Memorial Day and sail all the way through Columbus Day. You're talking to Australians. Oh, sorry. End of May through, um, let's see, <laughs> sorry about that. The uh, end of May through the beginning of October. Um, long, beautiful days in June and hot uh, summer days in July and August and crisp, clear, cool days in September with some awesome sailing in September when the fog finally rolls away. Um, and people can find out about my schedule and pricing at my website, which is isaacevans.com. Well, that's it for another week. We hope you've enjoyed the show. So whether you're hanging off the wire or winning in national titles or even sailing over the horizon, remember, a bad day on the water is better than a good day at work. See you next week.